so today we're discussing the case of a 22-year-old female uh, patient with a recently diagnosed classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, this was a young woman who was completing her college uh, coursework and noted some uh, cervical lymphadenopathy uh, over the period of a few weeks to months. Uh, she was initially evaluated by her obstetrician gynecologist uh, who initially observed her, but ultimately she started developing more symptoms while consuming alcohol. And so as a result, uh, she was referred for biopsy and ultimately was found to have Hodgkin lymphoma. As part of her staging evaluation, we completed a PET CT, uh, which identified uh, uh, several areas of, of enlarged lymph nodes as well as some possible bone lesions. In addition, she had an elevated white blood cell count uh, and elevated platelet count, whereas the rest of her labs were generally uh, within normal limits. Uh, she was ultimately uh, uh, had her pathology reviewed at Emory, uh, where it was confirmed to be a classical Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular sclerosis uh, subtype, uh, and with a fairly typical immunophenotype. Uh, uh, as a result, she was diagnosed with a stage 4 classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So this is a case of a fairly typical uh, patient with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. We frequently see this in young people, especially young women, and often patients will feel well up until the point their disease starts to cause more symptoms, and that's when they come to medical attention. Uh, when I saw this case and completed the staging evaluation, I was somewhat concerned about the fact that she had some uptake on her pet in the bones. Uh, this is not entirely uncommon with Hodgkin lymphoma, but certainly suggests that this is a more advanced stage disease. This is uh, not uncommon uh, to have patients with advanced stage disease uh, at the time of diagnosis. Certainly the fact that she uh, is a young woman uh, would support this diagnosis. Uh, and interestingly, the fact that she had some uh, symptoms that developed while consuming alcohol is been a classic symptom associated with Hodgkin, although we don't always see that in real, real life. It's something that uh, has been described. Fortunately, most of our patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma uh, can look forward to responding to therapy, and, and many of them will be cured of their disease. So out of all patients with uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma that presents at an advanced stage, our historical uh, expectation was that roughly 75% would be cured. In recent years, there's been new therapies that have been developed, including one uh, uh, which includes brentuximab vidotin, which appears to be improving that uh, by about 5 to 7%. So all of my new patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma will have a PET-CT as part of their staging evaluation. I feel that the PET-CT is important as it's not uh, entirely uncommon to have extranodal sites of disease, including the bones, like we saw in this patient. And the PET uh, really helps identify those sites. In addition, the PET-CT at baseline is important uh, because we frequently rely on an interim PET as well as a post-treatment PET, and it's important to have a baseline. Uh, in addition, I typically will have patients complete a battery of laboratory assessments, including assessment for HIV. Uh, it is not uncommon for a new diagnosis of HIV to be identified in a patient with a new diagnosis of lymphoma. One thing that I don't typically require of my patients, unless there's a specific indication, is a bone marrow biopsy. In the past, this was uh, typically done for all new lymphoma patients, but it turns out that it's exceedingly uncommon to have marrow involvement that ultimately impacts treatment. So the only time I really will have a patient uh, obtain a bone marrow biopsy is if they have some sort of hematologic abnormality or something else going on that makes me worried that there may be an, an additional process going on in the bone marrow.